Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation. We have e to the power pi x equals pi to the power e x, and we're going to be solving for x values, real and complex. So let's go ahead and take a look. So when you have an equation like this, you can go ahead and think about the common exponent. They both have x in them, so we can kind of write this as e to the power pi to the power x equals pi to the power e to the power x. And can we just cancel out x and then say e to the pi equals pi to the e? No, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to try to find an x value for which this equation is true. So there's a couple different ways to go about it. We can go ahead and divide both sides by the right hand side. So e to the power pi to the power x divided by pi to the power e to the power x equals 1. Of, of course, p, pi to the power e to the power x is not going to be 0 under no condition. And then we can go ahead and write this as e to the pi over pi to the e and then to the power x equals 1. Now we're thinking about when is something to the power x is equal to 1. When the base is 1, when the base is negative 1 and the exponent is neg uh, even or if the exponent is 0 but the base is not 0. Obviously in this case the base cannot be 1, right, because e to the pi and pi to the e are different things. Therefore e to the pi over pi to the e can never be 1. So we have to take that out of the possibilities. So the only possibility that we're going to look at actually is going to be that x equals 0. So x equals 0 is the real solution to this equation. If you look at the original equation, you're going to notice that it satisfies, the 0 satisfies it because e to the power 0 equals pi to the power 0 because they are both equal to 1. Make sense? So x equals 0 is a solution, but let's go ahead and dig a little deeper and check for complex solutions. So how do we go about finding complex solutions? So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation e to the pi x equals pi to the e x. Now, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And so we're going to get e to the pi over pi to the e to the power x equals 1. Now, instead of leaving 1 as 1, let's complexify it. In other words, let's multiply 1 by something that's not going to change the value, or that's actually going to give us infinitely many values of 1 in the complex world. And that will be e to the power 2 pi n i. Remember Euler's formula, remember the polar form of a complex number. If you have a complex number whose argument is 2 pi or multiples of 2 pi, then you're basically on the positive x-axis, right? And it just represents a real number. If you multiply by 1, it's just going to be 1. So, how do we go about solving this problem? We can go ahead and natural log both sides, right? So, you don't really need this one anymore. You can basically replace 1 with that. So, I'm going to go ahead and erase this part. And now, ln both sides. Let's go ahead and ln both sides, this side and this side. So we're going to get the following. x is going to be moved to the front. x times ln e to the pi over pi to the e equals, now this can be moved to the front using properties of logarithms ln e equals 1. So we can go ahead and write it as 2 pi n i. n is an integer, by the way. I forgot to say, but hopefully you guessed it. Now we're trying to solve for x, therefore we're just going to divide both sides by ln e to the pi over pi to the e. And that's going to give us the following. x equals 2 pi n i divided by ln e to the pi over pi to the e. Obviously, we can make a little bit of uh, modifications or just, you know, uh, expand this a little bit and write it as follows. This is the log of a quotient, so we can write it as the log of a difference or the difference of two logs, in other words. So like this. And then moving the powers to the front, it's going to be 
2 pi ni divided by pi ln e minus e ln pi. So since n is an integer, n equals 0 should also work, right? And guess what? n equals 0 gives us x equals 0. And as you know, x equals 0 is already a solution of this equation. It's just a particular solution. It's the principal branch. Uh, but if you're looking for general solutions, you can go ahead and replace n with any integer you want, and you'll get infinitely many solutions. So x needs to be an imaginary number. Think about this. This is a constant, so you can call that c if you want. And then 2 pi is a constant. n is a constant, but you can you know change it. Uh, it's an integer, so it's just going to be a multiple of i. In other words, it's going to be pure imaginary. Okay? All right. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.